Okay, so in this video, we're going to uh, do an incorrect proof of the chain rule, and that sounds incredibly goofy, uh, and you're probably wondering why we want to do that. Well, the reason is that, um, one, um, this proof actually shows up in uh, quite a number of places on the internet and in a couple textbooks, um, and it's good to point out what's wrong with it, uh, what's wrong with the proof. And uh, another reason is because uh, if we look at this first, um, the correct proof will be easier to understand, uh, and that's in the next video. Um, and that is kind of a complicated proof, uh, and it's really helpful to see this first, because um, they pretty much have the same basic idea, but uh, the correct proof requires a lot more work. Um, but anyway, so we know from the last video that uh, the chain rule says that ddx of f of g of x equals f primed of g of x times g primed of x, or in other words, um, the derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy multiplied by the derivative of the little guy. Okay, that's equal to the derivative of the composite function, uh, f of g of x, there. So let's see the uh, incorrect proof here. Um, and then at the end of that, we'll kind of talk about why this is called a chain rule, um, and we'll see what happens if we have more than just two functions. Um, here we have f of g of x, and at the end of this uh, so-called proof, um, flawed proof, we'll talk about what if we have f of g of h of x, and so on. So anyway, um, we're just going to use the alternate definition of the derivative. So let's get this out of the way up here. So um, let's use the alternate definition. So that's going to be uh, limits uh, as t approaches x of, uh, just straight up from the definition, here we have f of g of x. So this is going to be f of g of t minus f of g of x all over t minus x. Okay, so um, so we have a limit as t approaches x of this. So what I want to do now is uh, inside of this limit, okay, inside of this limit, so we're going to move this bracket further to the right. Um, inside of this limit, I want to multiply the top uh, and the bottom by uh, g of t minus g of x. So in other words, we're going to multiply by g of t minus g of x divided by g of t minus g of x. Okay, so um, why is this okay, and also uh, why is it not okay? Um, this is actually, so this proof is flawed because of this step here. Now what are we doing? We're multiplying um, by the same thing on the top and the bottom, right? Um, and that's just equal to 1. Okay, if you simplify you get 1, and that's okay, we're just multiplying by 1. That doesn't really change anything. But the problem is, um, what are f and g? They're just some functions, general functions. We don't know anything about them except we're just assuming that the derivatives uh, exist. Because again, if they don't, this doesn't even make sense to talk about. Um, but the problem is, uh, we're taking a limit as t approaches x. So g of t, you know, uh, t is moving closer and closer to x, so g of t is changing values all the time, right? x is just staying fixed at x, but g of t is changing values as t gets closer and closer to x, okay? Because, um, uh, you know, if we think about a number line, x is staying fixed somewhere, but t is moving into x from the right or from the left, or from both sides, technically. Um, and what might happen is uh, g of t might equal g of x somewhere, and if that happens, then you're multiplying by 0 over 0, and that's, that's a problem. We're not allowed to do that, okay? Um, here, if we just have t minus x, that's okay. That'll never happen, because as t approaches x, t is never equal to x, so that's okay. However, uh, g of t might be equal to g of x somewhere, um, and that's what's going to cause the problem. So that's why this proof is flawed, um, and there is a way around this, and that's the topic of the next video. But for now, let's continue with this, um, just to get a general idea of what's going on. Uh, so if we see the rest of this, it'll make the next video a little easier to follow um, and to understand. But anyway, continuing with this, uh, we have limits as t approaches x of um, f of g of t minus f of g of x don't know why I made that so big uh, divided by, so what I'm going to do is just swap the denominators, okay, so we're just going to swap these denominators so this is going to be uh, g of t minus g of x and then over here we're going to have g of t minus g of x all over t minus x Okay, so um, 
if you're a little confused by this step, let's just think about, so what is this? This is just a fraction times a fraction, right? So we can switch the denominators and we'll still get the same product. Um, that's all we did here. So if you don't really like that, um, let's come down here and we'll say, uh, what if we have like two thirds times five over seven? Uh, that's just a fraction times a fraction, right? And we know that that's uh, 10 over 21. Well, we can also write that as two over seven times five over three, right? So we can just swap the denominators, okay? So we just uh, swap the three and the seven and we end up with the same result. Um, we pretty much apply the exact same idea here to swap the denominators. Of course, these are much more complicated than just uh, two thirds and five over seven, but uh, the idea is the same. Just we can swap the denominators because these are really just uh, fractions. Anyway, just wanted to make that side note in case um, you were uncomfortable with this step. But anyway, um, now we have a limit of this times that. So let's split it up as uh, the limit of the first thing times the limit of the second thing. So this is limits as t approaches x of f of g of t minus f of g of x all over g of t minus g of x. All right. Uh, and then multiplied by the limit as t approaches x of the second part, which is just g of t minus g of x all over t minus x. Okay, so uh, now let's, can we zoom out a little bit? Yeah, zoom out a little bit. And then uh, equals what? Um, this first part, this is kind of goofy, right? That looks kind of strange, so let's ignore that for now. We'll just come back uh, to that later, and let's do this for now. So uh, times... What's this? Limit as t approaches x of g of t minus g of x all over t minus x. Um, that's the derivative of g, right? That's g prime of x. Okay, this is the alternate definition of the derivative uh, g prime of x. Okay. So now that we have that, let's come back to this. This pretty much has the same uh, format, or it's the same template, really. It follows the same template as this, right? Here's a limit as t approaches x of g of t minus g of x all over t minus x. And this is the limit as t approaches x of f of g of t minus f of g of x all over g of t minus g of x. Okay, so uh, here, inside the parentheses is t, inside the parentheses is x, and then here's t and here's x. Now, inside these parentheses is g of t, inside these parentheses is g of x, here's g of t, here's g of x. Okay, so let's say it again, uh, t, x, t, x, g of t, g of x, g of t, g of x. Okay, so what's up here is the same as what's down here. Okay, it's just t and x, t and x, but the same thing is happening over here, right? What's up here is the same thing as what's down here. Uh, in these parentheses up here, we have g of t and g of x, and then down here, here's g of t and g of x. So um, it's really the same kind of thing. But instead of, uh, so our function is f, right? In this case, the function is f. So it's f primed of something. But instead of just f primed of x, it's f primed of g of x. Okay? Because that's what's over here. Uh, here, this is g of t minus g of x all over t minus x. And uh, this is g prime of x because we take a limit as t goes to x. But here, this is the limit as t approaches x of this big old mess here. Um, but this follows the same kind of pattern, uh, I guess is a good word for it, the same kind of pattern that this follows. All right. um, but instead of just t and x, we have g of t and g of x, so that's why this is g of x here. Um, and that's you know, the result we were looking for. So remember, we started with uh, this up here. So what we just saw, or what we've just seen, is that uh, d dx of f of g of x equals f primed of g of x multiplied by g prime of x. Okay, so again, um, this proof is flawed because this uh, is not really a valid step because, uh, again, you know, we talked about it already, but uh, it's worth mentioning again, um, g of t might be equal to g of x somewhere. So, um, you know, even if t is not equal to x. So, you know, think of like uh, the function x squared. So uh, if we have y equals x squared, um, then when x is 2, y is 4, right? And when x is uh, negative 2, y is also 4. So, you know, t could be one of these, x could be the other one, and uh, if we call this g... So just for example, if g of x is x squared, uh, then g of 2 is 4, 
and g of negative 2 is 4. Okay, so there's two different values of x. Okay, there's two different input values. Okay, um, just like here, there's two different input values, but they might have the same y value. Um, and then when you subtract them, of course, you'll get 0, right? Uh, just a simple example of how that could happen. Um, so the point basically is that uh, g of t minus g of x could be 0 somewhere, and if that happens, then you're multiplying by 0 over 0, and that's not allowed. Okay. Um, and there is a way to work around that, and that's the topic of the next video. Um, but before we go on to that, I just want to talk about why is this called the chain rule? You know, what's kind of happening? You know, um, where's that name come from? Uh, and that's sort of related to the other thing I wanted to mention real quick. Um, what happens if we have more than just two functions? So let's go ahead and erase all this. So it's kind of called the chain rule. Um, pretty much because you have this little chain effect going on here. So um, if we have a function, a composition function f of g of x, uh, then we know um, df dx equals df dg times dg dx, right? So we've seen this uh, in the last video. But what if we have f of g of h of x? Yeah, okay. Um, then df dx, um, I'm not going to explain why, it just kind of follows the same principles that we've been dealing with, but it's going to get really ugly really fast. Um, this is df dg times dg dh times dh dx. Okay, so notice we have this kind of chaining pattern going on here. Um, df dg, okay, f g h x. Okay, here's f g h x. So df dg dg dh, dh dx. Um, and if we had another function, let's say f of g of h of k of x, the same thing would be happening. Um, so remember, this notation is kind of, uh, we don't really like it that much. Um, so if we use the other notation, we know that this is f primed uh, of g of x times g primed of x. Okay, we know that uh, the derivative Okay, d dx of f of g of x equals this. So let's maybe, um, let's write that over here. This equals d dx of f of g of x. Okay, we want to skip details, but we don't want to be too careless about it, so it's important to write what that equals. Um, but the same kind of thing can be said down here, right? Um, so let's say here, d dx of f of g of h of x equals... Uh, following the same kind of pattern, we're going to have f primed of g of h of x times g primed of h of x uh, times h primed of x. Okay, so we see this kind of chaining pattern going on here. And, you know, uh, this notation is much more compact up here but I don't really like to use it as much because it doesn't really show what's happening uh, as clearly as this kind of notation does, even though this can get messy. But we see it's pretty much the same thing, right? Uh, df dg times dg dh times dh dx. Okay, so that's what happens if you have more than just two functions. Um, and you can sort of guess what's going to happen if you have f of g of h of k of x. Okay, the same pattern will happen, but you'll just have one extra factor you'll have a dh dk, and this will be dk dx instead, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this kind of chaining pattern is what's happening there, and that's sort of why it's called the chain rule. Um, okay, so in the next video, we'll do the uh, formal proof um, with a lot of detail, and uh, we'll see how to handle that flawed step uh, from this proof.